morning guys, I wanted to do a quick intro to my third vlog, yes it is number three, I'm still editing part two of part two, so really mind-bogglingly confusing, especially for someone like me. <laughs> um, but yes, just really quickly, I've got to get a train in like um, 15 minutes and I've got to get to the station and everything obviously because there's not a train here. Um, but I wanted to quickly tell you where I'm going today and I'm planning on taking the camera to London town which is going to be <sighs> hmm. It's going to be interesting It'll be the first time I'll be vlogging out on my own in the public um, But yeah, so why am I going to London? The whole point of this is that I'm going to London today to see a production company, one that I worked with recently, and I told them at the time that you know I was interested in being having my own show, being the actual presenter. I, I'm not really interested in these little bitty roles anymore. I mean that totally sounds like you know diva, but I've been doing TV work for about nine years or eight or nine years now. Been on several different TV shows, and I really feel like now's the time to either have your own show or just not bother with it it's a hell of a lot of work like it's great fun you meet great people but unless you move up to that next level after a while you're just you're putting out way more work than you're getting a return for i will explain this in another vlog if you guys want to know how i managed to get on tv in the first place or my kind of journey to that um but yeah so for today going up to London, right in the centre of London, big offices to see production companies, talk to them about my TV ideas, mine! Now, I can't tell you what the ideas are, obviously, because someone could steal them and run away with them and dye their hair red and just become me and do it for themselves, which, I, you know, there'd be, there'd be a crime investigation then, because I'd have to strangle the life out of them. I put a lot of work into this. So I'm not going to give you the nitty gritty details, but I can tell you that obviously it's going to be about reuse, salvage, um, saving the planet, saving money in the process, and beautiful design work, obviously, because that's what I'm all about. I also check out the jacket. This is the outfit. I love this jacket. When I saw it, I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. I do prefer things that are normally cinched in around the waist because I've got quite big boobs and make me look a bit fat otherwise. But when I get there, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'll just sling, sling my graffiti coat over the chair and this is my the rest of my outfit. Charity shop for this. This is just a cheap little cotton vest which really hugs the figure, which is very nice. And these are my, I don't know if you can see these properly, but these are my vintage 501 Levi's. I've been working on that hiney, <laughs> you can tell. But I was so pleased to get into these because I bought them on eBay and you never really know, do you, when you buy something on eBay, much as I love eBay, but if it's gonna be something that, like jeans which are quite figure-hugging and you can't try them on, you just never know, do you? And with vintage stuff, it normally gives a bit, which is probably why I got into a 26-inch waist, <laughs> just had to throw that in there. I haven't been in a 26-inch waist since I was 17 and even then, that wasn't kind of, healthy, fit, slim, that was kind of like, I'm gonna die because I need to eat something, but I'm feeling strong, motivated, my hiney's looking good. Can you see it probably now? I've honestly really grown it. I've grown it, groomed it, grown it. My thighs, well, I, well, I, got, I got the jeans up to here and I was like, they're not gonna go on, they won't fit. <laughs> and I gave it a little wiggle and I'm, once I got over the, um, the hammies that I've been growing and the, and the quads and then got it over the butt I was like I've actually got some give up round here it's brilliant so basically means you know I'm just going to throw it in there you should be watching my workout videos as well really if you want to get in some 26 inch Levi's baby first time at 35 I'm really keeping an eye on the time so I've got to go I can't shut up can I so um so I'm going to take you with me now and We'll see if we can do some filming up there. They're not going to let me film in the offices or anything. I can't really say who they are either. But maybe I could get some cool shots out of the train or something. We'll find out, won't we? Anyway, wish me luck. Oh, one more. I've dyed the hair again. See how red it is? I normally put another dye over the top of it as well. But it's like super luminously red at the moment. It kind of got an orangey tint to it. But when I do the other dye over the top, then it will have more of a kind of brighter red less orange thing which I normally prefer but you know let me know what you think I'm gonna go now <laughs> say goodbye to my hiney <laughs> 
Oh, God. And trying to book the tickets for the train. You people who strike on trains. I'm not happy with you. If I get stuck up there for like three... Last time I got on a train, a 45-minute journey took me five hours. I didn't get home till gone midnight and I was very, very, very angry. Especially as it was only for a, like a 20-minute interview as well. So... Southern Rail, watch out, because I will be vlogging this if it all goes tits up. Mm -hmm. Just a quick shot. I should have done this before I put the thingy on, but... This, these are the jeans. And this, these are the footwear. Look at the feet! Totally could be doing this better. I'll, uh... I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll probably show you later, Mabes. Let's turn the lights off now and let's get out of here. I'm back from my train journey. Yes, I did carry this heavy camera all the way there and literally filmed for about two seconds. In my defense, when I got off at the other end, I had such a rush because my meeting was at 11.30 and the train didn't pull in till like 11.28. So I had a little bit of a run while I was trying to fathom out where I was going on Google Maps. So yeah, I, I really didn't have time. Then I went straight into the meeting um, couldn't really get the camera out for that because I can't really tell you what it's all about other than TV ideas that involve me. <laughs> um, and then on the way back, yeah, I pretty much just went straight back to the train station and got on the train. Luckily, no delays. There was, well, there have been strikes all week and you just never really know with British trains. For those of you that are in America or whatever, I don't know how it works over there, but the trains here are bloody awful. Constantly on strike, They're, they never run on time. I have been stuck in the middle of nowhere for hours on end on many occasion and I wasn't looking forward to it. But today went really well, the trains ran really well, my meeting went really well, more to the point. Um, really, really nice people that I met up with. We had a lovely coffee in a nice cafe. Went up to see their offices, massive offices, right next to Victoria Station, pretty much like within five minutes walk of uh, Victoria Station. So really, um, really big company and really nice offices that they've just moved into and they're kind of doing up at the moment. Um, so yeah, so we went out for a coffee because there was boxes everywhere and stuff. And, um, and we discussed plans. So things like this, people who don't know about TV and you know, have never tried to commission a, a TV idea, uh, you know, have never been in that kind of industry, will have no idea of the amount of planning that goes into a show and the length of time that it takes for these shows from paper, from idea, to get onto your screens. I mean, yeah, a quick a quick show to commission would take at least two years to get onto your screen. Uh, some of them, they bob backwards and forwards for bloody years, literally years. Can't stop saying the B word today, sorry. But I don't want to become a channel that's um, totally PC all the time, <laughs> because that's not me. Um, yes. So I've had to rush back, though. I, I would like to wander around London and take some pictures and uh, do a bit of shopping, but I'm afraid I don't have time, so I have to come back and do quotes and things. So I thought I'd show you what I'm doing as well. Um, this particular quote is for a mural. I'm going to show you on my massive pad. Um, and then I've got something down the workshop to show you a little bit later, which is for my new uni degree. I have to do a This Is Me presentation on the first day back. And... Um, and just think of something to make um, out of, well I think I can use paper mache, I can use wood, I can do a dance, 
or a poem or something. Oh, that's not going to happen. I'm making something out of scrap. And the salvage system, what do you expect? So I've, um, I've constructed something out of scrap. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I'll just take you down there later and see if you can see what it is because it's actually only half finished at the moment. But it does involve these little things. Mm. Couldn't be bothered to get the tripod out, so sorry, but you're wavering around on the end of my arm. Can you see these? Probably can't see them very well, but they're little tiny watch cogs. I had an ingenious idea, but well, it will be if it actually works out the way I'm thinking it's going to. Look, can you see those little ones on the front there? I'll do a zoom in shot in a minute, but yeah, basically they are tiny, tiny, tiny. Where was I? The battery died. <laughs> so yeah, they are tiny, tiny little watch cogs that I got on eBay, really cheap, and I think they're gonna really make my sculpture, should we call it a sculpture? Yeah, I guess that's what it is really. Um, I think it's just gonna, it's gonna make it, babe. It's gonna look bloody amazing. Here we go again with the B word. Could be worth, could be the F word. Just count yourselves lucky. So this is the artwork. Oh, not this one. This one was for the Drusilla's mural that I painted. I might as well show you that while we're here. That's my shadow there as well. Um, this is going to go, well, hopefully, if they like my work and they want it in their house. So I drew the tree. This is basically a kind of a to scale drawing of their hallway so it's got stairs going up here and there's a window obviously as you can see there and they want a tree kind of leaning up there and some little that's a little squirrel you can't really see it very well on the screen and oh because we're focusing on my hand because I'm a moron there's some little birdies in there and there and there and here there and everywhere so then I did my leaves on a separate sheet just in case they're like ah, oh, too much foliage oh I changed them on the color or whatever I can just take that off and put another piece on but as you can see from the top up here well I don't know if you can see but the ceiling lines there so this foliage is going to go up onto the ceiling and up around the rest of the walls so I think it looked pretty cool so basically I've got to finish off this quote that's why I've rushed back and I've also got to finish my uni staff ready to go in front of the class next week and I've got to write my column before that as well. God, I need to stop gabbling on to you and, and get on with some work, Williams. So I'll see you later and I'll show you my stuff down the workshop in a bit, all right? Yellow! We are on the way to deliver my alloy, BMW alloy wheel coffee table. And the road's really lumpy as well. And then we're going to the gym. We're dropping off these two. They were quiet for once. Oh my God, what's happened? You two feeling all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so on the way, we're going to drop off the table, and I'm going to get Tiger to film that because Dale won't film it because he's a misery. And we're going to the gym after that, and he won't film me at the gym either. He's going to let me walk around on my own, looking like an idiot, filming myself as well. Why well, have I got to be the one? Why well, don't you focus you on your face? She's not done set out properly. Wow. Focus on his ugly face. <laughs> it's the beard's putting it off. It'll focus, focus on my face. The there we go. Which is the only thing that matters, really, darling. <laughs> so, we'll see how Tiger's filming goes. Prepare for a video with no heads. Um, and then we'll see if I can film myself at the gym. If they'll let me film with my big camera in the gym. I don't, do they allow that? Do they allow it? No. They don't, do they? Yeah, you're just lying. No. I'm going to walk in there blatantly with it and see if they tell me off anyway. Um, and we'll see how all of this goes, won't we? And then after the gym, I'm sure someone will be very, very hungry. A little protein shake up there, fine. Did you bring yours? Yeah. You have a beautiful, okay. majestical beard, darling. That's quite long, isn't it? Really long, actually. In real life, before he had the beard, he had a bit of chimvi. I'm not going to lie. There's nothing in it, look. <laughs> <laughs> no jawbone. Bless him. 
Right. See you in a bit. My table, le table, BMW. No, you're right. Do you mind being on camera? She's just going to film. Hey, me? Yeah. I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to be on camera. Just stay at me. I don't matter. Hold the camera. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, really? <laughs> this is the anonymous man. Turn it off. Put it away. Bruh. Right, I've signed it underneath. Amazing, isn't it? It's got dust on it now because it's been in the workshop. But... That's alright. Mum, how do you turn it off? It's signed under there. Where is it signed? It's signed under there. So if you get like it? super, super famous. That's just going to skyrocket in value. He says there's a lot of windy roads coming up, so this should be fun filming. So the guy didn't want the camera out, didn't want to be filmed, said, oh, I look disgusting. I was like, you always look like that. <laughs> but yeah, he didn't want to be filmed, so you've got to respect that, I suppose. Ugh. Hidden camera next time. Um, but yeah, you saw the shots of it in the boot, and it was really, really lovely. And now I want one myself, so I might have to make another one. And now we're off to the gym. The gym. The gym. Yeah, we call it the gym. We're yeah, there. the gym. And, um, and then we'll see if we'll let us film yeah. there. If they don't, then it's going to be a complete waste of my time and energy, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah, because you didn't get to You'll be pleased, won't you? No more gymming. Photography in the gym and it won't focus on your face. Because you are just not playing the right thing. Morning guys, so today's going to be a bit of a mad rush, getting everything ready for college tomorrow because I start my creative metalwork degree. <laughs> and I have been told that I need to create a piece of work which I will present to the class. The brief, to summarise it, is basically it can be anything that's 2D or 3D to illustrate the phrase, this is me. Um, it says that we'll have to present this to the class, like everyone will, you know, bring in their own version of this is me and we will have to tell the group why this illustrates me, what I made it out of, where the idea came from, blah blah blah. Um, it's suggested that you can make it in clay, wax, paper, it can be a painting, a drawing, a photography, digital images, blah blah blah. She even said in my meeting that it could be a dance or a poem. I was like, I'm going to make it out of scrap. <laughs> so, I came up with an idea to begin with that would be almost like a kind of trophy because I thought it would be, you know, easy to hold up in front of the class and I was going to kind of base it a little bit on the trophy that I made for the Furniture Reuse Network. So I was going to use a break disc for the base and then I thought, you know what, that's going to be really heavy. Imagine running through corridors, sweating, not knowing where I'm going, you know, like one of those panic-stricken kind of um, nightmares that you have the day before you start school where you realise you're naked running down a corridor and I just thought all I need is just a really really heavy thing to rush about with as well that I can drop on my foot or on someone else's foot even better so no so I had to look through all my scrap items I'd already come up with a bit of an idea of having like two faces um, that were that are kind of signifying the two sides of me and I suppose everyone has kind of two sides there's the side of me that you guys see and then there's the side that is the scared child who doesn't think they're good enough and is pessimistic and all that do you know what I mean there's the good and the bad there's the you know what I'm trying to get at don't make me go through this any further because it's really cringe but that was the first idea okay to have these kind of two sides and then I started drawing up ideas so I'll show you some of them and show you how it kind of morphed into something else My little sketch pad. Oh, hang on, where is it? It's one of my drawings. This is something completely different. Right, so I started kind of sketching out two faces for two sides and I was going to have it on a kind of bar so it looks like a trophy. Then I had the idea of using clock, um, you know, like little, little tiny cogs out of watches, which I, I have some here somewhere, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so I started drawing up this idea and then I thought, you know what, the two faces are really cliche and it's, it's kind of going away from what I want to do. It's not about being happy and sad. It makes me sound like I'm bipolar or something. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not me, is it? It was getting further and further away from what it was supposed to be in the first place. So then I had this idea, just one face, and with the cogs 
kind of sticking out the back of the head and they're like the synapses of the brain where it's like brain overload. I do feel quite a lot of the time that I've got so many ideas and stuff going on inside my head that I'm just like, bleh. <laughs> also, I love horror movies and I love anything gory and I'm just a bit crazy and unusual and weird. And so this is how this came about. Hopefully you can see that this is my fringe and my nose and my mouth and my chin. It's like a profile of my head on some kind of plate thing. So that was the idea. And then I found this dustbin lid, which was my mum's. See, I did clean it a bit, but hey, hopefully no one will look underneath. And then I've attached to the plate with a threaded bar the cutout of the head there and I've gold leafed this as well if you guys would like to see um, a gold leafing sorry it's not gold leaf what are you talking about it's not gold leaf because gold's gross I'd much prefer copper leaf so this is done with copper leaf sorry why is it not focusing on my face there we go so I have copper leafed this here this here thingy um, and I've made it, given it kind of a rustic texture as well. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen some videos yesterday of me doing the copper leaf. And after I've done that, I then sand it and wood stain it with a dark wood stain. Gives it this rustic kind of texture. If you'd actually like to see a tutorial on that, let me know because I don't mind making a video. If you guys actually want to see it. Um, and then the top piece that's sticking out the head here is actually the first run of the perspex that went on the trophy award. I had some scrap perspex that I took into the laser um, laser engraving perspex shop. And the first version that they did ended up with this little crack. Yeah, so it ended up in this, with this little crack for one of the holes there. So I kept this piece and got them to do another one for the trophy. And that meant that when doing this, I had a scrap piece of Perspex that I could use that I'm then going to glue my watch cogs onto, which are going to look like the brain synapses and like the cogs are turning in there. Hopefully I'll have enough because they're really, really tiny. So I got these on eBay. They're floating around. <laughs> As you can see, the workshop has got everything out and is a right mess. So this isn't like the worst it gets, but it's not great really. Show some copper leaf, look, it's gorgeous, this stuff. Look how light it is. It literally just tears off like that. It's amazing stuff. Can't get it off my finger now. Isn't it awesome? I love the colour of it. So cool. So there's that. Um, these are my little tiny watch cogs. Look at them, how cool are they? Look how tiny. Oh, yeah, she's definitely gonna lose them. So I'm gonna use a glue gun to attach them to my head here. And I also want to do some coming out the mouth as well. That's kind of my, my horror movie, zombie, zombie movie, gory side. And hopefully they'll like it. I mean, God knows what everyone else is going to bring, but hopefully mine will be original. And um, they'll know from the get that go that I'm a weirdo, if you couldn't tell by looking at me. So the worry is that there's not going to be enough cogs. Um, I'm kind of vaguely confident that there will be, but I really wanted it to be kind of overflowing and coming out the mouth as well. So we shall see. I'm trying to spread them out as much as possible, but they're really amazing little things. I've, I've, I don't know why, I never thought of this before. Also, I'd hoped that I'd be able to just kind of glue gun it, tip them on and let them just dry themselves on there, but it doesn't look... Like that's going to work. I did a, a, a quick test and really because the glue dries so quickly I wouldn't have time to get them on there. So and plus because the lack of cogs, if, imagine if I did that, tipped them on and then I was like 
Oh, uh, not enough for that hole there, and they're all glued on now. So we're going to painstakingly do this by hand. Picking all these tiny little strings of hairy glue off is a real pain in the arse. This is why I don't like glue guns and this is why I can't wait to start welding and doing metal work the proper way. So guys, I have finished, well, I think I've finished. Thing is, I could carry on forever with these little cogs trying to glue them on, but it's driving me mad. I've got to write a column yet, and we're almost, well, we're halfway through the day. Did you hear some cogs fall off? <laughs> I've got to get it there tomorrow in one piece, look. Da 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 da, da da da. I think I just need to reel my neck in, have a cup of coffee, write my column, work out what I'm going to say tomorrow, and everything will be fine. Be a real bad boy. I've got a ton of gravel in my shoes. Girl on my shoulder, heart full of blues, I'm in the dirt. Down in the writing my column and I've been meal prepping at the same time, multitasking. So this is what I've got for tomorrow. Well, these are for two days and I'll probably eat them in two halves as well. So I've got my sweet potato under there, that's some chopped baby spinach, orange peppers and cherry tomatoes. And I will probably stick a splash of soy sauce in there, but not too much because it can be quite salty. And then I've got these, which will probably do me for dinner for two or three days even. That's if the kids don't get hold of them. And I'll also take some fruit and some of my... These are my naughty treats, my Kalo caramel rice cakes. Can't live without them, I'm afraid. It's my first day at college today doing my degree in creative metal work. And today I've got to go in, I've got to take in my sculpture thingy that I showed you yesterday and present it to the class, which I still haven't really worked out entirely what I'm going to say, um, but I'm sure it'll come to me. Um, it's, it's just gone 8 o'clock in the morning, I've got to be there at 8.45. Um, set out early because there's a lot of traffic that might be an absolute nightmare, especially if everybody can do it, everyone's first day. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm quite excited as well. Uh, it seems like a crazy journey that I've just decided I'm going to go on. I think it's my midlife crisis. Um, it's me. I'm scared. It's quite nice to have a look at my uniforms. Talk and flourish to your YouTube channel. God help me. So it's lunchtime and this morning's gone really really well actually. We've um, we did our This Is Me and I showed off my little thing that I'd made and spoke about the different materials and why I'd made it out of scrap and that I'm a salvage sister. And I'm being really quiet because I 
I don't know if they were all on lunch. So most of the others had to go to the canteen to get their lunch. And of course I had mine really prepped with my proteins and my carbs and my spinach. So I just came out and sat in the sun and I'm now given a tan. Thank God I wore shorts or I'd be real peeved. My eyes keep running because of some kind of allergy to the surrounding area. But um, yeah, on the whole, everyone's really nice. I'm not even the oldest person on the course. There's a lady who's 50, so I'm like, oh, like one of the youngsters. There are people as young as 18 on the course that have just finished their A-levels as well. So there's a really good mix of different types of people from different places. There's even an Italian guy as well. So yeah, there's a good range of different ideas going on and people hoping to create different things as well, looking for different things from the course. So I'm, um, I'm enjoying it so far. It's good. I'm not used to taking as many breaks. We've got a two hour lunch now. What must I do for two hours? Luckily, I brought my iPad so I can sit here and uh, read a book and catch up on, well, I could catch up on my emails if there was any reception whatsoever, but there's no service. I can't even text and I can't go on Instagram, which is really, really sad, but I guess it's good on a, a college campus to stop people constantly being on social networking. Um, so I just wanted to catch up with you quickly and tell you what's going on can't believe I'm actually doing this. It's like a total midlife crisis. I'm really excited to get started. So I'll give you another little update a bit later on how I got on.